Christ in me sees the Christ in you. Everyone's a chosen one, the many and the few. All together now it takes two. The Christ in me and the Christ in you. To know Christ in you. Everyone's a chosen one, the many and the few. All together now it takes two. The Christ in me and the Christ in you. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all stay through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who is my strength. I can do all things. Namaste. And welcome to our Life Enrichment Center live streaming Sunday on this amazing autumn day. All this week, and I'm sure you've all noticed, I mean, Mother Nature was just, oh, the weather was so beautiful, and all the colors were so radiant. It was, um, it has been and continues to be an amazing autumn here in the outskirts of Flint, and we are so grateful. And um, before we have our prayer this morning, it, uh, it occurred to me that I want to say that I know you know that my talks, or Ted's talks, anybody's talks, books, my books, anybody's books, all of those things are intended to help us remember what we already know, to help us remember who we are. And I'm sure all of us have uh, um, something that we do at night uh, to bring peace before we sleep. And sometimes I think about the animals of um, our planet. And I think of them wherever they are being so peaceful and feeling so safe. 
because they haven't forgotten. They remember what we've forgotten. And so the other day, I came across a beautiful poem by Wendell Berry. And um, I'd like to begin our prayer this morning with that poem. So if you would, because I'll go right into our prayer if you want, just close your eyes and just oh, open to this moment. Just let go of all thoughts and be present with these beautiful words. It's called the peace of wild things. When I win despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world, and I'm free. And so this morning, as we move into our prayer, let us feel that freedom that comes with remembering that God is all there is. There is no place in this world or in this universe where the presence of God is not. God is life. God is love. God is the energy of creation and always present. And so we recognize that presence as a power to heal. And it heals just by being the truth of being, the truth of our being, the truth of life, that all life is good and whole and complete and perfect. And in this moment, let us know that about our own physical body that it matters not what has happened in the past or what a diagnosis may be in this moment, in this now moment, all things are possible because God is. And let us know this is true for every living being. Let us know this is true for our planet, it matters not. What illnesses have happened in the past or how many have felt it. In this holy moment, in this beautiful place of now, healing can and does take place as we open up to the truth that God is health and wholeness and perfection and the energy that creates in us and through us and through every living being. And let us feel that peace that comes with knowing that there is no other power. There is no person, there is no government, there is nothing in this world that has power over the power that is God. And that power loves and protects us, brings us health and wholeness and love and peace. Blessed peace. And so we recognize that peace is the power in this world, and no other power can oppose it. And we are grateful to know that this prayer, in this moment, brings peace to our planet, peace to our country, peace to every country, peace within every being, peace within every mind, peace within all words and actions. There is only God, and God is a God of peace. We are so grateful to know this to know that our prayer is answered here and now according to our openness and our willingness to accept the truth, and we do here and now. And so it is. Amen. Amen. 
All right. Well, we have um, a new, fairly new, we did it last week, but it's still new, uh, opening affirmative statement. So I'll ask you to repeat after me. I am a spiritual being of love. Living in a spiritual universe of love. Love sources me. Guides me. Comforts me. Heals me. And is with me always. All right. Okay, well, we have a few announcements. Um, our October focus is on the power of trust and CDs of today's talk. Do you need an emoji? Will be available upon request for $3 and as a podcast, free uh, tomorrow at, on our website, lecflint.com. The full service will be live streaming if you. Um, want to see it again or you want to tell someone to catch it on our website um, and also just the um, talk portion is available and also a synopsis which is where Janice Walker gets all of her quotes that she uses on our LEC uh, Facebook page so and thank you Janice for all that you do yeah okay well, today is the day, and I know that you have been looking forward to it. Today is our annual membership meeting. Woohoo! Yes, it's at 2 p.m. today via Zoom. And hopefully by now, if you're an active member of uh, LEC, that you've gotten uh, the code and the password and everything that will get you in. And um, as I mentioned last week, we'll be voting into uh, new members to our steering committee and uh, Martha Schertz and Sheila McCambridge have beautifully and generously stepped up to fill those positions so we'll be voting them in and of course we'll accept any uh, nominations from the boxes should that happen um, for anyone qualified uh, to be on the steering committee meeting the qualifications. Um, we're also going to be, uh, let's see, what else? What other fun things are there going to be? We'll have a, a financial report, sort of the state of LEC uh, for the year. We'll have committee reports, and we'll be voting on a valuable change to our LEC bylaws. Yeah, fun. Now, in the past, we have really seduced you to come. Uh, by offering harvest pies at our meeting. Uh, but since we can't do that today, it's a bring your own pie event. Um, but we hope you'll be there anyway. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you there in your square. All right, two o'clock. No. Mm. Be there in your square. Yes. Okay. Well, want to mention that you. Everyone is welcome to join us on Wednesdays at noon for What's Up Wednesdays. Uh, we have such a good time. It's just such a beautiful get-together of sharing, and one thing leads to another, and we end up having just beautiful spiritual conversations about life. It's great. So if you'd like to join us, um, you let uh, Jim Gould know at j period r period gould123 at gmail.com and um, he'll send you the information you need to zoom in and if you want to join in a guided meditation we begin with that so be there on time at noon okay well next month our focus is going to be on the power of gratitude and i'd like to invite all of you to send uh, me an email uh, and my email address is all lowercase rev period stephanie at comcast.net if you have something that you would like me to announce some good news something that is um yeah 
uplifting. And sort of like this, over the weekend, Jim Gould became a grandpa for the second time. Yeah, now he has a granddaughter and a grandson. So something like that, or something good that's happening in your world that you're feeling grateful for, and we can share it so that we know what is going on in, in each other's lives. Okay, um, let's see what else. So if you're new to our LEC service, and we hope there are some of you out there that are today, um, we are just so happy you're here. Welcome. And share this message and get your friends to check us out. Uh, and if you do hear something that's not familiar to you, um, I kind of doubt you will, but you might, um, just let it flow over you. It's It'll occur to you that, ah, that's what she meant, um, during the week anyway. So uh, welcome, and uh, for now, just know that there is a power in this universe. This beautiful universe loves and supports you in all that you choose to be and do and have. And um, that's what we're all about here is supporting you in that too. So I think that's it. That's it. I could see you gesturing a minute ago. You're done? You're, you're calmed down now. Okay, good. Well, then we'll go on to our song for the month, and it's by Gary Lynn Floyd, and it's perfect for trust. It's called Love Cover Me. As time has unfolded me, it has revealed to me life's nothing less than sublime and with every thought I make every last breath I take may I be gracious and kind love I invite you to open up this heart of mine love cover me Light every darkness, love cover me, right every wrong, cause me to see.
just love that song it's just beautiful huh okay well we are focusing this month on the power within us that as a course in miracles tells us keeps all things safe and our focus could not have come at a more perfect time because it certainly seems that at the present moment, we live in a world that appears to be unsafe in so many ways. Ways we haven't imagined before. If our sense of health and well-being is dependent on a world of conflict and disagreement about what's safe and what's not, if we continue to look to a world outside of us to tell us what to believe about life, we'll continue to feel unsafe in so many ways. But in view of the seeming impossibility of any kind of immediate physical solution to a world situation that's long gone viral, it would certainly seem that a power that keeps all things safe is a power to give our complete focus and attention to. A power to pray to, listen to, surrender to, and feel our oneness with so that we are able to feel that power within us and become a way for it to express in the world and keep all things safe, ourself, our loved ones, and every child, every woman, and every man, no matter where, no matter who, no matter what. It's a power that requires trust because it cannot be seen with our physical eyes. It's a power that requires faith because we must feel its presence, its invisible presence within us before we see it around us. In Science of Mind, we read, it's well to remember that the enlightened in every age have taught that back of all things, there's one unseen cause, a common thread that runs through all, the thread of unity. We access that one unseen cause and consciously use its power to create our experiences in life through our practice of trust. Trust first that it's there. Trust that its intrinsic goodness is everywhere, including right where we are. Despite appearances that occasionally may seem to 
oppose our good or good itself. The practice of trusting life brings a deep feeling of confidence that all things turn out good for us. Trust gives us peace in our mind that transcends worry, a calm in our emotions that transforms anxiety, and a constant happy anticipation of good in our life that excludes doubt. Can't trust and doubt at the same time. When we feel the good within us, we're willing to patiently wait with a sense of safety and well-being for the appearances of good to manifest around us. Our trust-filled thoughts that life is fundamentally good emit a vibration that attracts into our individual life expression forms and expressions and experiences that validate our trust that life is good. A feeling of well-being rejuvenates our body. A feeling of openness brings about positive encounters with others, and a feeling of safety allows us to fear not, no matter where we walk. When we trust in the goodness of life, we are naturally open and receptive to our good. We expect the best from people and conditions and situations. We'd rather be peaceful than argue, and we'd much rather be happy than right. And yet, when we trust in our good, we're not surprised when we feel good, when we feel energy and enthusiasm for life. We're not surprised by serendipitous encounters that happen at just the right time. And we're not surprised at any good result in our life because we live with an expectation of good that feels natural to us and manifests naturally for us. On the other hand, or on the other end of the stick, if conditions and situations and events in our life seem to oppose our good more often than occasionally, then it's likely that we're not only not trusting life, we're suspicious of its intentions toward us. We're not surprised when the tiniest sniffle becomes a full-blown illness or the tiniest pain becomes disabling. We're not surprised when dishonesty appears to be the motive of everyone around us. If it seems, as Roseanne, Rosanna Dana used to say, if it's not one thing, it's another. It's likely our thoughts are emitting a vibration of suspicion that's attracting to our individual experience of life plenty of forms and expressions to validate our suspicion. Cagey characters, shifty situations, curious conditions that just go to show you it's always something. Now, Eckhart Tolle wrote, it may look as if the situation is creating the suffering, but ultimately this is not so. Your resistance is. It's our resistance to trusting what we haven't seen yet that causes us to suffer about what we do see. 
Because when we focus on whatever is physically in front of us that doesn't seem good, as if it's a cold, hard fact that'll never go away, we're right. It won't. Whether it's a condition of our body or the behavior of someone towards us or the behavior of someone in the world who appears to have power, it won't go away as long as we continue to focus on it. It's our resistance to it and our determination to get rid of it at all costs that causes it to stay in our mind and before our eyes. As we said last Sunday, you got to believe it before you can see it. And if we don't believe that's true, then we have trust in something. But it's not in the power that keeps all things safe. When we resist letting go of blame for our suffering, whether we're blaming bad people or bad genes or age itself, that resistance keeps the good from flowing into our life through the inlets of positive receptivity that trust creates in our life. We create streams of positivity and life just naturally flows into it. Resistance causes us to fear that if we don't prepare for the worst, our health, in people, in situations, it'll catch us by surprise, and we don't like to look foolish. We like to be prepared. So we're not surprised when our health goes from bad to worse. We're not surprised when a little disagreement turns into a full-blown argument. And we're not surprised when we're swindled by just about everybody we ask to help us. Our efforts to ensure we're never fooled or taken advantage of is the very energy that attracts both to us. And then we say, I knew that was going to happen. And even though what happened didn't feel good, often we're satisfied just to be right. I mean, we'd rather think of ourselves as having psychic powers to predict something going wrong and something going badly for us, even before it appears, than to live in the innocence of trust that no matter how bad things look, even if we can't see how, that something good is just about to take off its cloak of invisibility right in front of us. There's a line in the lyrics from the song, The Rose, that says, it's the one who won't be taken that cannot seem to give. Suspicion ties us up in knots, ties up our mind and our emotions and keeps us contracted. It prevents us from being open and giving from, my, uh, from our hearts, and it blocks the good of life from turning out to be good in our life. Abraham Hicks tells us, you are not here for the relationship with others. You are here for the relationship with source, love. And from that relationship, all kinds of meaningful other things will happen. Joy first, and then anything else you have time for. Which brings us to the title of today's talk. Do you need an emoji? 
I overheard someone say the other day, you know what she wrote in that email didn't sound good, but then she ended it with a, a smiley emoji, so I guess it's okay. As we said last Sunday, we are so used to looking for physical evidence of what to believe before we believe it that we will even let an emoji influence us and help us decide what to believe. But there isn't an emoji in the world that will help us to trust if we don't. Now, I have a friend that I've known for a few years now who likes to use a winky emoji a lot. And if you don't use a computer, you know that a winky looks like a dot, and maybe a sideways comma, and if you want, you can put a little smiley under it. Wink, wink. We get the picture. Now, when he'd send me an email or a text giving me the details of something unwanted going on in his life, he would end the email or text with the words, it's all good, and a winky. Now, I used to wonder, does that winky mean that we know it's all good despite appearances? Or does it mean it's all good, it's just something we say when bad things happen but we don't mean? It's all good, wink, wink. Then it dawned on me, what does it matter what he means or doesn't mean? It's the way I choose to view it that matters in my experience. And it's what I believe to be true that creates in my life. And if I believe it's all good, no wink required, then I create from that good. And good things happen in my life. How often do we spend time trying to figure out what somebody meant by what they said or what they wrote before we decide if we're okay or we're offended, before we decide if we're going to be defensive or not. When we live in suspicion, we don't give others the benefit of the doubt or the benefit of trust. We look for a hidden meaning behind their words because there's often a hidden meaning behind our words. Even if someone means no harm, our doubt and their sincerity, our lack of trust, keeps our mind in confusion and conflict and keeps our emotions worked up and we feel uncomfortable and our feelings filled with hurt that contracts us and keeps us from giving of ourselves. So how do we, as the song said, see love over hate? How do we rise above blame and live in a no-fault state of mind? How do we rise above suspicion and learn to trust? Don Miguel Ruiz wrote in The Four Agreements, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. It's we, who we are in the world that creates our experience of the world, including our experience of other people. When we are impeccable with our word, when we speak with integrity, we're more likely to see that impeccability and that integrity 
in those around us. Abraham Hicks said, if you want to be of greatest value to others, see them as you know they want to be. I'm sure they meant nothing by that. But what does it matter if they did or not? Our trust in their intrinsic goodness kept us happy, kept us peaceful in our mind and uplifted in our emotions and in great expectation of a good outcome. It's not about blindly trusting the world as it appears to be. As A Course in Miracles puts it, it's about trusting in the world because we know it's not governed by the laws the world made up. It's governed by a power that's in us but not of us, and it's our trust in that power that keeps us safe and keeps us feeling good and seeing good. When we trust that all life is intrinsically good and live with a deep confidence that things turn out good for us, things turn out good for us. We trust our intuition, the guidance of that holy light within us that never tells us, watch out for the darkness. Don't trust the darkness. It simply leads us to the light every time. The poet Rumi wrote, feel the sweetness in your own heart. Then you may find the sweetness in every heart. As we feel the sweetness in our own heart, it is easier for us to feel that sweetness in another. We bring that out in them as we rise in our own sweetness. When we find the feeling place of love's flow within us, then all kinds of meaningful other things will happen. Joy first, and then anything else we have time for. We won't need an emoji. We won't need everyone to walk around carrying a smiley or a heart so that, that we can see, so that we know what their motives might be. We won't need anything in this world to convince us that life is good. Feeling good, easy, lighthearted, filled with trust will be so natural to us that we'll feel it despite those occasional times when something seems to oppose our good or good itself. Namaste. All right. Well, I'm having fun with this particular focus this month. All right. So this is the time of our service when we get to say thank you. We get to say that um, we want to keep doing this, to keep live streaming until we can stream together in person. And so, your support is needed. And if you have been supporting us financially, thank you so much. And if you haven't, or maybe you forgot, but I want to remind you, um, if you don't know how, 
that you can go to our Facebook page, Life Enrichment Center, and hit the donate button. You can go to our website, lecflint.com, and hit the contribute button. If you belong to PayPal, or you can go to PayPal. It's easy. You can mail us a check, and thank you. And as always, you can text. You can text. It's easy. It's fast. You could do it right now if you wanted to. Except we've got our phones turned off in here. OK. So anyway, thank you. We are grateful for you. We are grateful for us. We are grateful that we are all connected uh, and know our connection in ways that up until this all came about, we didn't quite know. We actually thought we had to see each other and touch each other to know our oneness with each other. And through all this and all of the time that we've spent away, we couldn't be more convinced that we live in an energy of life that connects us, that unseen cause that is the thread of unity is here. It's love, it's peace, it's joy, it's every good thing. And we're coming to know that. So we're going to move into our gratitude song, which is Grateful, by Nemo Patel and Daniel Namad. You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love, you're my hands, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug, you're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun, you're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter, you're my friend till the end, you're my dreams, you're my father, you're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround, I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the clouds, you're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow, you're the strength when I'm hollow, you're the path that I follow, you're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that all that I am, all that I see, all that I've been, and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all, for it all. Everything all will feel gorgeous. Sitting pretty cause what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine How do I get back to all of this magic and spread the love so everybody can have it Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor, if I got a family or if I'm all alone Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan But there's a million things that I can be grateful for
things that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything is a gift. It is a gift to know that everything in our life is a gift. That everything that comes to us arises from within us. And we are blessed by it. It allows us to know that we can choose and choose again. That we can grow and remember and as every good thing comes to us, we feel such gratitude for this gift of life that is so beautiful and luscious and giving. And we open to receive more and more so that we can give more and more. We live with an openness of our heart and we are grateful that our hearts are open right now, open to the love, open to the healing, open to the power, open to the peace, open to the truth, open to the allness that God is everywhere. And feeling so grateful to know this, so grateful to stand in that truth that God is all there is and that is our conversation, let us say our statement of abundance together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Amen. All right. Well, we have a closing affirmation, and it goes like this. The sweetness within my own heart smiles on all the world. Ready? The sweetness within my own heart smiles on all the world. Again, the sweetness within my own heart smiles on all the world. Was that two or three? Oh, okay. Let's do it again. All right. The sweetness within my own heart smiles on all the world. Ooh, we could say that all day, really. Let's do that later. Maybe we'll do it at our meeting. Why not? Okay, well, we're going to say goodbye. We're going to say, we love you. We're going to say, see you soon, um, for those of you who are coming. Not sure. What did you say? Are you praying over there? Oh, till we meet again. Yes, yes. Happy trails. All right, so we're going to peace out. And I'll be quiet.